welcome to Carolina Classrooms. I'm Dawn Samples. Last fall, voters in South Carolina chose Molly Spearman to be the new superintendent of education. As a former music teacher, assistant principal, legislator, and statewide education administrator, Molly comes to the job with a wealth of experience. She was inaugurated on January 14th, so she's been at the helm for just over a month now. She joins us for the next half hour to discuss the goals that she has and the challenges she faces. And we'll answer some of your questions too. Molly, welcome to our show today. Thank you, Dawn. We're so glad to have you here. Thanks. I'm thrilled to be here and I appreciate the voters of South Carolina giving me this opportunity. Well, I know there's a lot of excitement about you in office now and a lot of questions that people have. Mm -hmm. So just to start off with, why don't you tell us a little bit about some of the things that you have as a vision for South Carolina education? Sure. Well, the first thing that I think is a real need in our state is that everyone come together around a common vision. We really haven't had that for public education. And this work started a few years ago with a group of superintendents and then working with the State Chamber of Commerce to start developing what we thought should be a vision for public education and for our students. And it's called, it's developed now into the profile of the 21st century graduate. I have adopted that as our vision. The State Department of Education has adopted it. Most recently, the State Board of Education, the Education Oversight Committee. I've shared it with the House and Senate Education Committees and encouraging them to mm -hmm. use this as their focus as well. And what it talks about is that it's not just about the content that graduates need to have to, in order to be successful, but they also need characteristics and skills to be successful in whatever the next step is after high school. So we're pushing that as the vision and hopefully every decision that we make and every program that we fund will be focused on that. Are we doing everything we can do to ensure that every child in South Carolina, no matter where they live, is prepared for life after high school, and that includes being a productive citizen. So that's really the vision. Um, the second thing that I'm really devoting all my time to right now in these first 30 days has been just to settle things down in education. We've had a lot of anxiety, a lot of things to happen over the last year. Uh, the standards had to be rewritten, and we, we're almost done with that. We have a new test that's going into place and right. teachers are faced with a new evaluation system. So really taking a step back and trying to lead us to get all of that settled in a very common sense and fair way is a high priority for me. So what are some things that you might could share with teachers about these changes that are underfoot mm -hmm. that might perhaps relieve some of that anxiety okay. for them? Well, first thing, uh, we are almost done with the new South Carolina College and Career Readiness Standards. In January at the State Board of Education meeting, uh, we presented the English Language Arts Standards and they were approved for first reading. Uh, last month, already in February, we introduced the math standards, same way. The next, we have two more steps to go through, and that means uh, requires all of the provost of the public colleges and universities to endorse these as college and career ready standards. And we're far along in that process. We, they have till the end of the month to finish reviewing them and, and giving that certification. And then the final step will be going th before the Education Oversight Committee, which we hope to do in early March. And our, our hope, and we're very optimistic that we'll be finished by March 31st. Okay. So we'll know what the standards are. So that's, that's one of the foundations that teachers have to have, and it's been kind of up in the air. But I want to say a big thank you to all the teachers, because there were hundreds who devoted their time, their expertise, sacrifice being away from their jobs and their families to write these standards. They're very proud of their product. It's a superior product to what we had. So uh, I, I really appreciate the work that they've done. Yes, and I know that you, I have heard you recently share that teachers, but there were also other parents and community members that were part of these teams also. That's right, and the first draft was put up on the website. We had over 2,300 comments and suggestions from business leaders, from parents across the state. Then we pulled together a review team and writers in the same room. We started that in January. Parents were involved. So I, I really believe that it's an improvement over what we had. Mm -hmm and is something that we can be prou proud of and that really will prepare our students for life after high school. 
So all of this is happening in a timely manner. I know a lot of teachers have um, been a little anxious about the new teacher evaluation mm -hmm. system. So what are some things that you might want to share with teachers so they understand maybe what that timeline is looking like yeah. now? Well, there's a the evaluation system, as teachers know, is out there and uh, there's uh, some new parts to it that we have not had before. One is student progress. Uh, we're measuring how far the students go and then teachers will be, uh, part of their evaluation will be based on that. There's been some anxiety about the percentages. Uh, I personally think we need to take a look at that because currently the percentage is at, at lowest 30 percent up to 50 percent of the evaluation is based on that at a time when we're putting in a new test mm -hmm. and we really didn't know what the standards are. So because of all of that, <laughs> I think we need to pause and really mm -hmm. let everything get put into place and we want a good system that's fair to teachers and teachers want that too. They don't they don't back away from being held accountable but it needs to be a fair system so I'd, I'd like to let teachers know that we are going to try to slow the process down of, of when that data will be used officially. It's been put off for a year. We probably need to delay it even more. Then the other big thing that's happening is that the No Child Left Behind Act or ESEA, Elementary Secondary Education Act, is currently being reauthorized in Congress and with new leadership on the education committees in Congress particularly on the Senate side um, Senator Lamar Alexander from Tennessee is now chairing that committee and he has a different viewpoint about how involved the federal government needs to be in these type activities. Some of the changes we made were required by the federal government and right. now we're hearing that maybe they want to back off from that, which sounds like a good idea to mm -hmm. me. And so we may have more flexibility at the state level. So again, that will allow us to make some changes that I think will make teachers feel much more comfortable with the evaluation system. That's great. I know a lot of teachers will be happy to good, hear that out good. there. Um, so you, one of your platforms or part of your vision is about preparing our students to be 21st century learners. And I think a lot of people have an idea about what that involves. Um, a large part of it is about having our students ready for the workforce or for mm -hmm. college. Can you talk to us a little bit about um, what your vision is for that and what that maybe looks like, what expectation may be for our teachers and our students right. with regard to that? Well, one of the things that goes along with having the work, uh, graduates ready is that they have those skills and employers are telling, that's, telling us that that's where our graduates are lacking in those social skills and characteristics like showing up to work on time, uh, knowing how to work together, getting along, shaking hands, dressing properly, mm -hmm. those things that uh, we sometimes uh, don't spend a lot of time on uh, at school, but we're, we need to. So one of the ways that schools are changing, and this is so interesting to me because it really is bubbling up in the classrooms. I think teachers have realized that before we realized it at the state level. And so in the classroom now, teachers are teaching differently. Mm -hmm. It's more project-based. Uh, some folks like to say, oh, I wish we could go back to the good old days. Well, when I was in school, we sat in straight lines and the teacher lectured and we worked in workbooks and it got kind of boring. You don't see that now in these classrooms where right. project-based learning is taking place. Mm -hmm. Teachers give a few 10 minutes or so of instruction and then students work together to solve prop some real life problem and they're working together and it's, they're very engaged and they're applying what they know in the classroom. So that's a much better way of learning and they remember it and they see the relevance. Mm -hmm. It's rigorous and they're having fun and put all those together, you have an engaged learner. So not only are our standards there to help that foundation, but the strategies of delivering the instruction in the classroom has to change. Lexington One is one of the leaders in this in, in the country, and we have pockets of this going on in classrooms and districts all across the state. I hope by the end of my tenure, that this won't be just in a few districts and a few classrooms, but it will be the norm for classrooms in South Carolina. And that's very exciting. It really is a focus and an emphasis on the learner right. and not the focus on the teacher. So with that in mind, it's a big change for parents to understand. Mm -hmm. um, it's a big change for them to maybe relate to because it's different from how they learned, as you mentioned. Right. So what are some things you can maybe suggest or, or 
give us examples of that might be able to show how we would measure the students, um, what they've learned or how they're applying what they've learned. Right. And I think this is something that particularly over the next four years, parents in South Carolina are going to see a change and probably across the country as well because we've been testing just content knowledge and on a given date and we haven't tested can you apply the knowledge. So this is going, I think, to change the whole accountability system from that big test that happens in April. Most okay. districts now realize it's better to test as you go along. It gives more information for teachers and for the students. And really you test to find out the competency exactly. of, the, of the student. And once they're competent, don't make them sit there for the full 180 days and get bored. Or if they need a little longer, that's okay. So we've been punishing schools and teachers if, if it mm -hmm. took a little longer for, for some students, and we've been holding some kids back. So you're going to see a new type of measurement, uh, of competency measurement, and it's done when the student is ready, and then they should be able to move on to the next task. So again, uh, we've got Lexington One District is doing a lot of that and across the state in schools. So my, uh, our team is looking right now, how do we change the whole accountability system in South Carolina to match that and to really give uh, parents good information and to encourage schools to do this rather than being punished by just having the old type of one test in April. Exactly, and it is a lot to grapple with. Mm -hmm. It's a lot to kind of try and figure out how to make all of this work because right. it's so different from what we've been accustomed to doing. Right, it's so different and we have schools and districts at so many different levels. So it's almost like we're gonna have to run two systems for a while until mm -hmm. we can move everyone forward, but it's very exciting. And I think it's, school is gonna be more fun. And I, I would say to parents, um, you know, if, if you're nervous about it, go in and watch. Uh, usually the kids are picking up on it much quicker than the adults are. <laughs> and not to be nervous about it because I think the students are definitely enjoying school more. Mm -hmm. And just sitting there um, listening to a lecture in straight lines, uh, we're going to lose our students if we continue to do that. It really is putting the students' needs at the center of, right. of every decision and that we make. And it's personalized. That's the other exactly. big thing that we're finally admitting <laughs> that all students learn differently mm -hmm. and uh, you know even the graduation rate if it takes if a student can graduate in three years we need to allow them to do that if it takes a little longer that's okay um, we need to be proud of their successes I know that this also means a lot of change for the infrastructure of how our days is, are structured mm -hmm. um, how we go from scheduling students for their their classes to moving them into colleges and universities or to the workforce when they right. graduate. Right. There's a lot of um, structural change right. that would need to ha also take place. Yeah, and I think too, uh, it's a big shift for parents because you ask most any parent what their dream is for their child, they'll say to go to college. And that's been a lofty dream and a good one and still a good one for many students. But there are students who have uh, talents and skills and interests that going to a four-year program first may not be their best option. Right. I know down at Wando High School in their career center there, they are in, in their high school, they actually have students who are going right out of high school into a career now in cybersecurity. And others that need to go straight into a technical program or even it would be great for families when they go through a mentorship program or through an apprenticeship program mm -hmm. where they're working part-time, going to school, and probably the business will pay for the schooling and then once they're out, maybe help them finish their four-year degree. So there are all sorts of options and I would just encourage parents to really think about what's best for their child and talk with their guidance counselor and uh, really get some uh, information on what's the best pathway to get to their student being a productive citizen and being happy in what they do. Right. I know one of the questions that we had from one of our viewers, um, Kathy, had said that public education often receives a bad reputation in South Carolina, and I know we have a lot of change underfoot mm -hmm. that's coming, um, but based on opinions rather than facts and data, um, how will you help raise our profession to garner the respect and the level of respect that it deserves? Right. Well, a couple of things. First of all, I, I'm going to 
talk about positive things that are happening in South Carolina. And we have many, many positive things. Uh, we have schools and districts that are recognized nationally. We have folks coming in from across the country to visit our schools, to see our principal leadership, to see our turnaround schools, to see our world language programs or our career centers or our project-based learning. So we have a lot to be proud of and I think that is my job as the ambassador for public education in this state to tell about that. Now sure, we've got areas that we need to improve but I've always believed that you can get people to follow you and when you um, provide them with more positive and, and an optimistic goal to reach. So that's one thing. So I'm going to be talking about successes. So I invite all the listeners, particularly the teachers, if they have success stories, to send it to our uh, website, Celebrate South Carolina, and uh, we'll be talking about them. Um, I think the other piece of it is to really rally the business community and all folks behind to support teachers. Um, and I believe one of the things that we have not done as well as we could in this state is to make sure that teachers have great principles. Uh, we talk a lot that the teacher, having a quality teacher in every classroom, and that is so important. Mm -hmm. not, not, I don't want to take away from the importance of that, but how do you retain those teachers? Make sure they have a great principal. How do you have a great school? Have a great principal. I've never that been to is right. key. Leadership mm -hmm. is key, and the principal has to know how to support teachers, help them with their instruction delivery, how to, how to support, how to measure, and, and give counsel, and uh, be devoted if, the, if that's not working to help the teacher find something else to do. I think that's a very, very tiny percentage, but that has to be done. So I'm going to be putting more focus on principal leadership and also allowing teachers to participate in leadership at the school level. Mm -hmm. um, Great principals involve teachers in what's going on in the decisions at their school. So that's another way that teachers feel good about what they do and, and want to can stay in the classroom. Mm -hmm. Always we need to be looking at higher pay. Um, we, I've asked for additional funding this year in the budget and hopefully that will come through. But uh, I, I think that districts want to, they realize the need to, particularly the entry level pay for teachers. Right. So. Um, and teachers work so hard. Oh, they do, and they're they so do. devoted. And um, PBS is going to be carrying a program called 180 Days in Hartsville, and it follows two schools in Hartsville. That's uh, later on. And I hope folks will watch that because it is very encouraging to mm -hmm. see just how dedicated these teachers and principals are to their community. And I find that wherever I go. Um, and you know, a lot of people don't realize that teachers work nonstop um, mm -hmm. and to maintain their certification. And one of the things that's come about, um, one of our, watch, our viewers had actually asked mm -hmm. about also, Stacy had asked about this. Um, one of the things teachers are about to have to do is go through Read to Succeed right. certification. So can you talk to us a little bit about that? Sure. Well, Read to Succeed for the audience is a program that we initiated last year. Uh, the legislature uh, passed the statute that requires a new emphasis on reading, particularly up through the third grade. And so we're having uh, the legislature funded reading coaches. And one of the provisions of the law, though, is that a child should not be promoted if he, at third grade if they're not reading on grade level. I was really concerned when I saw that and honestly opposed to it until I went and talked to my community school, Hollywood Elementary, over in Saluda where they have a great reading program. And they convinced me by, that they don't wait till third grade, uh, that in this new project-based learning atmosphere that students, even in kindergarten, if they're not ready to move on to the next work, they keep them there and transition them through classes until they're ready to go. And they make sure they're ready for first grade. And if they're ready for first grade, they're ready for second grade. So we don't need to wait till third grade. And I, I'm hoping that with the emphasis and these quality coaches and teachers really understanding, everybody in the building understanding how to teach reading, uh, that we won't have too many children that we would have to retain. And there are, there are uh, supports there, and uh, it is a joint decision between the superintendent and the principal at the school and the parents. One of our other viewers also asked, um, Terrence, um, had asked how your office would also help our rural schools mm -hmm. improve their ranking right. in the state. Well, I have a real special place because I live out in Saluda County in a rural area and understand the challenges there. 
Um, it all goes back to quality teaching and quality leadership, and that's really hard in rural areas to recruit people mm -hmm. there. I think one of the things that we can do is to provide programs to grow your own teachers and to help pay for that. Sometimes it may be a bus driver or a teacher's aide who just didn't have the financial support to go to college. So we need to offer programs there for those folks who live in those communities and who will stay there forever <laughs> and teach. Right. So we're looking at that. Um, I also hope that um, through technology and building the infrastructure for Wi-Fi in all of our school districts, the quality of virtual instruction now is wonderful. And we have over, I think it's pushing close to 20,000 students now who take virtual classes through our own department virtual school and there are other charter right. K-12 virtual schools available too. And it's really, really high quality teaching from certified teachers, usually mm -hmm. South Carolina teachers. So I think having the infrastructure to, to offer that well in rural areas can help also. Um, so those are two things. There, there are other things, sometimes it's more than just the education, it's the whole child and the health benefits and and all the issues that a child, the support issues that a child needs. So we're at the department, we're working closely with other state agencies to see how we can collaborate. I don't think there's been enough collaboration and working together across silos, or across offices in the department, and across buildings and through other state agencies. So there, it sounds like we've got so much so much coming our way. That's really exciting and I'm I'm so thrilled that you came to Thank talk you. with us today. We really enjoyed it and I, I really think that the teachers out there are going to be excited to hear some of the things you've been able to share with well, us I today. Appreciate so what thank they, you. Thank you and I thank them for what they do every day. Absolutely. So during each program we like to showcase some of the wonderful things that are going on in our Carolina classrooms. This month we get a look at an amazing horticulture major at Wando High School in Charleston County. Started in 2009 with a patch of dirt and some donated seeds, this program has continued to grow and now includes a horticulture classroom at the Center for Advanced Studies featuring hydroponics, tissue culture, a rooftop garden, and a greenhouse. Let's take a look. Wow, what a great program. That looks exciting. Teachers, we invite you to submit a short video, two minutes or less, showcasing your students for possible use on future Carolina Classrooms episodes. Please visit our website at scetv.org forward slash learn or the Pinterest site you see on the screen now to find out the rules and how to submit your video. 
This spring, South Carolina is changing the way it tests students in our public school system. On March 25th at 7 p.m., Carolina Classrooms will have an assessment professional from the State Department of Education along with a school district representative to talk about those changes and what they mean to you and your students. We'd like to include your questions for our guests, so please send them ahead of time to carolinaclassrooms at scetv.org. And Molly, this is an important and very timely um, topic to talk about for our viewers, isn't it? It really is. I've been really concerned that our parents and students may not realize that we are giving different tests in April, and they're quite different from the style that we've used before. So number one, they're timed. And um, our students have been told, you have all day, you know, take your time. So that's going to be different. So folks need to get ready. And plus, we're instituting a new test called a, um, a Work Key, excuse me, ACT, but also Work Keys in 11th grade. And this test, really, students need to work hard on this because there are different levels and employers can use this and colleges can use this. We've had a few students in South Carolina to already take the test at the platinum level. And uh, that means they're, they're ready for any job in the country. So they're highly employable. So take this seriously, students. That's great. It's mm -hmm. great news. Well, that's all the time we have for now, Molly. Thank you for joining us, and we hope that you enjoyed tonight's program. For everyone at ETV, I'm Dawn Samples. Thank you for watching, and good night.